Yeah, okay, it's recording. Okay. So, you have to... Cool, cool, cool. All right. Yep, we're good to go. All right, let me pull up. I guess we can do the ES6 portion. Yeah, we can start that. So that was that was the plan anyway. I haven't. Yeah, I've done a little bit of it, but I haven't done as much as I probably. Yeah, I, I did. I I um I, I think I worked on a tutorial on ES6 though, not really ES6 itself, but like the um code the, the what the person used is more of ES6 than the normal JavaScript. Oh, uh, I see. Um, yeah, yeah. So cool. I think it should be shouldn't be that new to me. Yeah, I, yeah, I think I'll be okay. I've, I've done, you're right, I've done like tutorials in which it, it showed, like it's not implicit, like it's just if the tutorials were in ES6 and you just kind of, yeah. since I have a broad understanding of JavaScript, it just kind of worked out. <laughs> yeah, you're good at this. <laughs> cool, all right. I guess we'll start with the first one then. Uh, hold on, give me some, let me try to. Yeah, yeah, please. Let me get, let me get my um, head piece. Hold on, please. No worries. Please take your time, get set up, get comfortable. Okay, go ahead. Cool, all right, let's do it. Uh, ES6, explore differences between var and let keywords. Uh, one of the biggest problems with declaring the variables with the var keyword is that you can overwrite variable declarations without an error. So uh, on their line one, it has var camper equals James. The second line has var camper equals David. And then when you console log the camper variable, it re returns David. It logs David, I guess. As you can see from the code above, the camper variable is originally declared as James and then overridden as David. In a small application, you might run into this type of problem, but when your code becomes larger, you might accidentally overwrite a variable that you did not intend to overwrite. Uh, because of this behavior does not throw an error, searching and fixing bugs becomes more difficult. A new keyword called let was introduced in ES6 to solve this potential issue with the var keyword. Um, if you were to re replace var with let in the variable declarations of the code above, the result would be an error. So let camper equals James, let camper equals David throws an error. This error can be seen in the console of your browser. So unlike var, uh, when using let, a variable with the same name can only be declared once. Note the use strict, um, this enables strict mode, which captures, which catches common coding mistakes and unsafe conditions. For, okay, so for instance, use strict x equals 3.14, this throws an error because you did not declare the variable x. So the task would be to update the code so it only uses the let keyword. So let's see. Uh, so we'll replace the first line and the second line. Then it updates it. Does this still work? I guess it does. I guess, so you can declare let in here as, under, well, I guess you haven't declared it yet. It just, nothing happens. And then you can, once it's actually defined, then, okay, okay. That makes sense. What, what makes let better is that when you declare a variable, you can't redeclare it. You can only reassign it to something else. Right, but in this, in this version, we're declaring it, but we're not assigning it yet. And so, yeah, so once it becomes, even if you assign it at the top, then we can already assign right. something else. But we can't we declare the variable. Right. So yeah. if if this happened, like so, if we did something here, then a an error would happen because no, no, an an error would happen because you just reassigned it. It's oh, when you okay. declare it again, like you use like inside inside the function. Oh, function, I see what you mean. Now use let let cut cut cut. It's throw an error. You can just uh, try that too and check your. Uh, Right. Um, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So oh, no. uh, that should do it. You can you can copy and post and paste it uh, up like in the console, like the brother to, to make it to so you can get the details of the um uh, get the details on like the error the error error stuff. Really? Oh, because I'm not console locking. Man. I'm just doing it. But there's nothing returning now. It's yeah. just there's nothing returning from the from the function, so you don't console lock anything. So you just have to add the return statement to add a return statement to any of the distance. Just return cat name or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it makes sense in the sense, like, once you declare something, I'm just, and then obviously, like, this just yeah, takes care you know, of. You know, with var, you can actually redeclare that cat name again. Right. And it will throw an error. Just try, copy the code, copy the code. Like, just let's go to the console, like the uh, browser console, and try all of this out. Type, okay. Type error unknown duplicate declaration of cat name. So it's just it's just the fact that you use let. Yeah, you can. But if you use var, like if you if you, if you declare the variable from the beginning with var, you can always redeclare it again. Right. And to try an error, and it's actually for you to like to like debug that to be hard for you if it's a big uh, a big program. So that's more like you have to like decide on which one you want to use depending on the size of the program. All right. Well. Cool. All right. Cool. Dope. Maybe later. Okay. So ES6, compare scopes um, with the bar. I guess it's the same thing. Compare scope of the bar and like keyword. So now we're going to scope. When you declare a variable with the bar keyword, it is declared globally or locally if you're declared inside of a function. The let keyword behaves similarly, but with some extra features. When you declare a variable in the let key, keyword inside of a block statement or expression its scope is limited to that block statement or expression so for example uh, uh let's see so it declares a num array variable with an empty array we run a for loop we declare bar i equals zero i is less than three i plus plus and then we push the uh number or i guess the i into the num array array. Uh, then we console log num array, it returns 0, 1, 2. And then if we were to console log i, it would return 3 because that's where it was when it stopped the for loop. Cool. With the var keyword, i is declared globally. So when i is executed, it updates the global variable. This code is similar to the following. So that. Cool. OK. That makes sense. This behavior will cause problems if you were to create a function that stores it for later use uh, inside a for loop that uses the i variable. This is because the stored function will always refer to the value of the updated global i variable. So, yeah, that's weird. Uh, let's see. So bar i equals zero, i is less than three. If i is equal to the number two, print num two becomes a function which you return i. I see. Cool. As you can see, print the print num two function prints three and not two. This is because the value assigned to i was updated and the print num two returns the global i and not the value i had when the function was created in the for loop. The let keyword does not follow this behavior. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, you won't be able to access i because it's specifically for this block of the, of the loop. Cool. So you strict print num two let i equal zero i is less than three i plus plus if i is equal to two. We turn print num2 into a function. 
in console log the function, which returns two. And if we were to console log i, it would return i is not defined. i is not defined because it was not declared in the global scope. It is only declared within the loop statement. Print num2 returned the correct value because three different i variables with unique values were created by the let keyword within the loop statement. Fixed, okay, so our assignment is to fix the code so that i is declared in the if statement, is declared in the if statement, it is a separate variable than i declared in the first line of the function. Be certain not to use the var keyword anywhere in your code. This exercise is designed to illustrate the difference between how var and let keywords assign scope to declared variables. When programming a function similar to the one used in this exercise, it is often better to use different variable, variable names to avoid confusion. So, let's see. So var does not exist in our code is a requirement. Var variable i declared in the if statement should equal block scope and check scope should read Turn function scope. Cool. All right. So bar does not exist. So we're going to have to do this. We'll make it only available in here. If true, which is always going to be true because true is true, i equals block scope and console.log block scope i is i. So that's it. Oh, oh, okay. Call the function name so you see what uh, call the function name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Oh, just a technical this function declaration. Oh, because each i is going to be, so like this one will be true within the check scope, and this one will be true within this, this conditional statement. And then this will be true in both. In, yeah, okay. But we're creating an i that's available in the function scope, and this i is available in the block scope in this conditional. So this i will return block scope, and this i will return function scope. We 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 uh, we initialize uh, i in right the if, in the if block. So mm -hmm. when you actually so just changes like the whole value, the value of i in the entire program. Right. This won't work. This will only work in here specifically, and everywhere else it will show up with this, with this function scope. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Well, yeah, this is fun one. Uh, ES6 declare a read only variable with the constant. Let is not the only uh, new way to declare variables. In ES6, you can use declare variable. Const has the awesome, all the awesome features let has uh, with the added bonus that variables declared using the const are read only. Uh, Adam, mm -hmm. okay, uh, uh, what, what, what is the correct in that, uh, that particular uh, chapter? Because I can't really get this one. Well, I don't understand this thing that fix the code so that. Wait, what do you mean? Like the code, like what, after you change uh, the uh, declaration to let. The declarations oh, what, what, this one? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, for this one, I set let, so that's function scope, right? So, yeah. this console log function scope is uh, function scope. And then here I had to set let because this i is different. We're, we're creating this, which is, I guess, we probably should have sent. 
Uh, okay, so okay, okay. Realistically, we probably should have done this, right? Yeah, so we are, we, oh, oh shit. Okay. So in theory, because it, 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 it shouldn't be this, like, this is confusing in the sense that all of this is I, right? Yeah. So if you were to click, so let's say we use J as, as a second. But I guess they, it's I because, yeah, variable I needs to be block scope. That's why. Still don't like that. I don't like when they use the same variable names. It's annoying. Yeah, it's confusing also. So, it's just they're just trying to like point out something within the. Um, like just to explain the. Yeah. Right. Like this variable is is obviously different from this variable. Yeah. 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 And it only works because, in this because, it, because it's in a, it, it, it's in different um, different blocks of like the code, right? Yeah. Right, but like because we're de we're declaring this i in here everywhere else. So like we if we were to do another, uh, if we were to remove the let, it would return um to return block scope. See, that's the thing. I don't think here does it. It will work. Like I mean, like when you call the function. When you console log it after the this thing, the return the return value will be block scope instead of uh, instead of function scope. Console log the function after 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 the uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess the problem is is that we're using the strict mode, so I don't like so technically this i is a completely new variable, and that's why yeah. I think this. That's why you have to end up using that. Um, that one you can see returning block scope because you didn't really declare oh the i see okay so everything just becomes this become like takes over yeah it takes you just initialize the variable and you go on uh, but if i put let me let yeah to return function scope this so it's more like it's more scope. like a new a new variable within a new declaration within that uh, block 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 of right. code that is completely separate from the i that was yeah. set within the initial yeah. value within the function. Yeah. The first i is more of, um, I think, global. Then the right. second i is more of like within just uh, local, within just that each statement. Right, right. Yeah. They're, they're each, this block, it, it shows that there's two separate blocks, right? Like, so this is a block, and then this whole function is technically a block. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. All right. So this should be fun. All right. ES6 declare a read only variable with the const keyword. Let is not the only new way to declare variables. In ES6, you can try, or you can also declare variables using the const keyword. Const has all the awesome features that let has, with the added bonus that a variable is declared using const are read only. They're constant value, which means that once the variable is assigned with const, it cannot be reassigned. So they use the strict uh, key, and then they declare const fave pet cats. And then if we were to try to uh, redeclare fave pet to dogs, it would return an error. As you can see, trying to reassign a variable declaring, uh, declared with const will throw you an error. You should always name variables you don't want to reassign using the const keyword. This helps you accidentally attempt to reassign variables that is uh, meant to stay constant. A common practice when naming constants is to use all uppercase with no words um, separated, oh sorry, with words separated by an underscore. Change the code so that the variable declared using let or const. Use let when you want the variable to change and const when you want the variable to remain constant. Also rename variables declared with const to conform to standard common practices, meaning constant should all be in all caps. So one of the requirements is var does not exist in your code, sentence should be a constant declared with const, i should be declared with let, and console.log should be changed to be print the sentence variable. Okay. So let's go from top to bottom. Uh, so this is going to become a, a const. So I will 
uppercase all this. And then I guess the second line, we're going to set it to let. So now it's only within here. And then we'll update the const. And I think we're good. Let const, there's no var. Yay. Okay. Do you, like I knew the, this practice, but I've also noticed that some people in their code, especially with React, they tend to use the const variables for functions, especially smaller functions that are only doing like one, they're actually functional functions, right? Where they're return, like they're doing something and they're returning a value. I've noticed a lot more people using const to declare their functions. Yeah, you can do that. You know, you can okay, you can you declare you can declare a function and assign it to to a variable, like right? yeah. So you can do that and assign it to a let variable. Right. It's the so, it, it's the same as like as if you would do this function and a name, except you're declaring the variable first, and then you're just doing a function with uh, yeah. with the parameter. Yeah. 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 I just I, I I haven't used constants probably as much as I probably should have, but I really haven't used like Latin. No, I, I, I use that most of the time because yeah, I, I'm not used to it. Yeah, because it seems like most of the things I'm changing need to change, uh, yeah. but I guess it means I don't have to redeclare anything, so that's good. Yeah, okay. that's the best. Just don't forget about var. Like just yeah, just forget. Just forget if you ever existed. But yeah, sometimes you just like one of the problems you might just need to use var instead because I don't know. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. Just information. Cool. All right. So ES6 mutate and array declared with const. The const declaration has many use cases in modern JavaScript. Some developers prefer to assign all of their variables using const by default, unless they know that they will reassign the value. Only in that case, they'll use let. However, it is important to understand that objects, including arrays and functions, assigned to a variable using the const are still mutable. Using this const declaration only prevents reassignments of a variable identifier. So for their example, they used to use strict key, they declare a const s as an array, put in the values five, six, seven. S equals, we try to reassign another array of one, two, three, uh, that throws an error. S with the index of two, uh, they assign it to number 45, which works just as it would an array declared with var or let. And then if you were to console log S, it would turn five, six, 45. As you can see, you can mutate the object five, six, and seven itself with the variable S will still point to the altered array of five, six, and 45. Like all arrays, the array elements in S are mutable but the const was used. So you cannot use the variable identifier s to point to a different array using the assignment operator. So this one is an array is declared as const s572, change the array to 275 using various element assignments. So our requirements are we do not replace const keyword, s should be a constant variable using by using const, uh, do not change the original array declaration, and then s should equal 2, 5, and 7. Cool. So const s, this is invalid. That's true. So as I say, it's, what is the error that it gives? Oh, I should probably comment this. So S is read only. Okay, cool. So uh, we want to make two seven five. So S zero I know is S two. I should probably. 
I guess console.log, no, return s. And then console log this. Just so I can see a value, I guess. Probably a good idea. So s one. Oh crap. So I should probably S zero S two. I should probably put them in. I can just define a number. I'm not gonna. I don't. Why am I trying so hard to like name a range? <laughs> None of them. Just looking at you. I literally. I'm trying to, say, I'm trying to, I'm trying to complicate the whole issue. <laughs> I super trying way too hard for this problem. Yeah, I just hard coded it. You could use a for loop, but that was a long thing. It says you you already know the values you're changing, <laughs> but then you yeah, assigned them. Just so speak them one by one and assign them. What a dumb dumb. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what a what a why am I trying so hard? What the? F yeah. All I'm right. Trying to complicate the simple issue. Whatever, it works. Yeah, it works. All right, I could, I'll do a few more and I'll give up. Cool, okay, uh, so ES6 prevent object mutation. As seen in the previous challenge, const declaration alone doesn't really protect your data from mutation. To ensure that data doesn't change, JavaScript provides a function object.freeze to prevent data, data mutation. Uh, once the object is frozen, you can no longer add, update, or delete properties of it. Someone mentioned it yesterday. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think, uh, I think it yeah. was Pat. Pat or Rush. Or Rush. You don't know them. Do what now? I think, yeah. You mentioned object the freeze. Someone mentioned object the freeze yesterday. Uh, Rashad mentioned Yeah, that's probably Rush. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. So once the object is frozen, you can no longer add, update, or delete properties. Any attempt to change the object will be rejected without an error. So they let. Um, Variable object equals an object with the name of free code camp and review is awesome. Uh, Object.freeze, they freeze the object. So, huh. So when they do object.review and assign it to bad, it just nothing happens. Hey, it's an error, boy. It's an add to it. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, I see mutation not allowed because of that. Okay, so it just returns. Um, so if you try to assign anything else and you try to receive the object, it will just come back as is. Cool. Okay, uh, in this challenge, you're going to use object.freeze to prevent mathematical constants from changing. You need to freeze the math constants object so that no one is able to alter the value of pi, add, or delete properties. Uh, so do not replace the const keyword. Math constant should be a constant variable by using const. Do not change your math constants, and pi should equal uh, 3.14. Well, I think the obvious thing would be probably object.freeze. And the parameter of math constants. Nope. Type error cannot also read the property. What? Type error cannot assign read only property pi of object object. Oh, this. This.
That was weird. Well, he's just trying to get it. Yeah, just. Oh, is it because yeah. he's trying to narrow? Like you can check. You see, you see, see the tribe. Try, the try, Look at the tribe block and the catch block. The tribe right. block tries tries to assign the mud. To the oh, the okay. So it's actually running. Another, okay. It's trying. Yeah, it runs the whole thing. It's trying to assign the mud to another variable. Then, if, if it throws an error, then to, the catch block will be executed. If it doesn't, to go through. Right. To return a uh, map right, 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 right. constant to uh, spy. I got a question. I'm trying to catch up with you guys. On the previous, yeah. not the previous one, it was the probably two in front of the one you're at. The declare read only? Yeah, declare read only variable with conch keyword. Is there a reason they changed the variable to all caps? Cause yeah, that's like, that's like, um, that's like the, the, um, the way to, to, to it's just the best way, like just a, um, like the practice is not, it's not, it's not compulsory, but just to make your code, like to differentiate const, const, constant variables from normal let variables and just capitalize them. And use okay, so that's, it's common to use all caps with constant. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just the practice, not, not actually on the rule inside JavaScript. Yeah, I had the same thing too because I've noticed that um, there's a few books and a few articles I've noticed that use cons and this thing, but I think it's more of like just a just so that everyone's aware if it's all in capitals and has an underscore <laughs> under each yeah. word that it's a constant. But so you know what I we initializing it just to, not just to break your code. Trying to remember, there was way yeah. Doesn't say it in here, does it? it and it says something, it's just a practice, not the real nothing serious about it. Yeah, here it is. A common practice when naming constants is to use uppercates. Just to differentiate, let so you know when you say when you say variable that that's like um from capitalized then you know what I visualizing it just not to break your code. Right. So it doesn't need to but like for i mean other than this specific test where it wants you to but yeah you can declare with any about just to make it look better differentiate the declaration so it's still weird <laughs> well, again because like I, yeah because i i see const and people using it for objects and and arrays and it confuses me because i mean obviously we're going through this now where with this free with this object dot freeze method um, and then the previous example for that showing you that like, yeah, I guess you can't reassign like if this S, if you assign this S an original array, you can't assign a whole new array, but yeah. you can't go into each index and, and change it. When you use it, I don't think you need to change anything on it. Right. It just, it would seem like, it's almost like, uh, <laughs> Uh, what's the, the issue with me? It seems like why would you explain it that way? Because now in my brain, I can see like how bad. Like if someone if someone's in a pinch and like for some reason wants to get around, it's the same way as like people in CSS using the important keyword. Like yeah. everyone tells you not to use it, but then like you see this code where like importance on a bunch of stuff, and you're like, wait a minute, like. You told me not to use it. Why is everyone using it like it's normal? Well, you have if you're doing like WordPress stuff, um, in order to override like anything that if you're like using a WordPress theme and you want to use custom CSS in it, you have to use important. Really? Or, I thought, I, but I thought the whole point of like a child theme was like so you can add because technically it's like the, the cascading part, right where you're trying to like throw your code down. So that, well, no, I guess you'd have to be like more specific or you'd have to use specificity more in order to override the original stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah so you're just, either, you're either I'm, I'm not an expert on that. I just, I, I saw some, a video, somebody talking about that. Right. And I guess that's the funny thing, right? Like, so in the same breath where I hear people saying like, don't do this is this like the next sentence is okay we're going to use this in this scenario and you're like wait a minute like don't tell me like don't tell me something's bad but then like use it but then say like <laughs> sometimes. Mm -hmm. sometimes yeah i was there was a video somebody posted on twitter the other day and they were talking about like when you're a software developer and you have a client you're working for okay how you code it for that client is you have code that works right right yes 
Don't code it for right. a coder. Right. Code it for your client who probably right. knows nothing about code. <laughs> now you'll have other coders that'll probably shit on your code saying, right. hey, that isn't the right way to do it. You could have done it this way. But what does it matter? The client paid you to make that code. Right. And this is <laughs> Oh, go ahead, TK. Oh, like it's like you're you're satisfied the client. <laughs> maybe later you can develop on it then maybe like always develop on what you well, to do. Yeah, just like, like sometimes you have to make up you have to meet up with deadlines and all of that too. You just do what you have to do to get like get to working for that right. point. You can always develop on it since you might be the one managing it. Yeah, and I'm trying to like balance that with like what I originally like a lot of the people that I, um, I guess I talk to and I follow is more of like their concern. And I guess maybe because it's more of a professional and I, I'm sure it's completely different in like a, in a freelance or very specific project scenario, but it's really like code, not only for like, like for other people reading the code, but like code for yourself six months from now, because in that yeah. moment, like you're definitely, you're like, you're aware of how you're writing, but like six months from now it's gone, right? Like you've gone through a bunch of other projects. And so, the, the more you comment and like code out this for yourself so you don't look like an idiot because at some yeah, point so you have to come back to always, it. That's, that's the point of you can always develop on it. And develop right. It. But it doesn't make it work. Yeah, right. Since you might be the one managing it, then with time, every time you look through it, maybe right. you, like you develop some other skills or some, you have some new knowledge that you can use to like simplify the code and break it down, make it look better, all of that. Watch first, just get it working. That's, that's yeah. The first thing. yeah. I think I've kind of taken your advice, DK, because I remember you saying that last week. And so a lot of the, a lot of the algorithms, um, I get it working. And then, and then you're like, okay, yeah, I can refactor this. Like, I have an extra yeah. chance. I can. Just get the code working. Like, right. First thing you should do is, like, because I did something on CD, like, the best way to, like, program, like, to write a program, write out your test, your, your test, like, what you want the program to, like, do all the, the, the inputs you want the program to execute and what you expect the output to be. Right. Yeah. After you write out the test, then you write the program. Just anyhow you want to write it, it might, just, might not even look good. Just get it to obey the test and get it working. You get it. After that, then you start, you, you, pick, you pick like each part, then you, you like, you work on them, like you uh, make it look better, you get like, like you refactor it, like you, uh, um, they add something, even if it's like, even if you did it in a way that it makes it look long, then we, when you refactor and do everything, you shut at it. But you still have to check whether it obeys the, the test so you won't go the wrong way. Every every step of the way you check the test, you're still obeying it. Then when, you, when you're done, you see like the program will be much better and to still obey the test. You know, you just trying to obey it, like make it look much better from the answer, so you just take more time in it. Right. No, that makes sense. Hmm. So, um, next one is um, okay. I'll do one more and then I'll let you guys, let someone else take over. Cool. All right. So this is kind of what I was, um, all right, cool. We're, we're going to go over this. So this, this helps me. ES6 use arrows functions to write a concise anonymous function. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly okay, what I was, no I was question. That's difficult for me. <laughs> In JavaScript, we often don't need to name our functions, especially when passing a function as an argument to another function. Instead, we create inline functions. Um, we don't need to name these functions because uh, we don't reuse them anywhere else. To achieve this, we often use the following syntax. So const my function, a function decoration, in parentheses, uh, opening curly braced, and then const my var equals the string value. And then we return my var, closing curly brace. ES6 provides us with the syntactic sugar to not have to write anonymous functions this way. Instead, we can use the arrow function syntax. So const my function equals empty parentheses, fat area, arrow, uh, open curly brace, const my var equals value, return my var. So that, that the arrow just replaces the function statement. That's it. Right, right. With that fat arrow. Uh, <laughs> Where equal sign less than, yeah, equal sign less than symbol. Yeah. <laughs> when there is no function body and you only return a value, arrow function syntax allows you to omit the return keyword as well as the brackets surrounding the code. This helps simplify a smaller function into one line statement. So now const my functs equals empty parentheses, 
equals sign less than, uh, and then the string value. The code will still return value by default. So uh, rewrite the function here assigned to the variable magic, which returns a new date to use the arrow function syntax. Also make sure nothing is defined uh, using the keyword var. So uh, our requirements are a user did replace the var keyword, magic should be a constant variable, magic is a function, magic current returns the correct date, and the function keyword was used. So, uh, da, da. so first we'll call it declare if const magic. We will remove the function declaration. We'll do equal sign. And then realistically, we don't need any of this or the return keyword since it's all going to be on one line. And that right? Is that how it works? Cool. One thing you have to know is that, like in JavaScript, like when you're when you're when you like have a block of code, if like the line you're going to add that block of code is just one line, it's just one line. You don't need right. to call it. Right, because if if it's more than one line, then you need to call right. it. Right. It's completely different when it's like, so let's say I decide I'm going to keep the U strict in there, right? Mm -hmm. So the parentheses, the parentheses or the, the curly braces will stay in here. And then whatever, like, because it still creates the scope, right? Or this block scope. Mm -hmm. So then U strict is applied and then we return the new date. Most of or, this is just reduce the size of your code. Or if I do console.log, uh, you know. Yeah, so you, I, can, you have to use, so this is like more than one, more than one, more than one line. There's more than one line of code then right. you have, you have to use the But I can see the benefit too with this, especially with like a more functional uh, so part, right? like, so, just only one thing you can, you can right. squeeze so, everything with one line then you can just so you have like for those things should be like really one line. Most of these things just like help the help the syntax to be like very to be shorter than these programs to decide the programs to be shorter than before. Right. I can see now why they would use that like one liner, especially if it like you've, cause most of uh, it seems like most functional programming in this sense like yeah. JavaScript is you're just yeah. breaking, like, so you're just breaking a bunch of actions, a bunch of things you're doing into smaller little functions. Yeah. Right? And then, and then yeah. like almost like a component and then putting those functions back into a bigger function. So doing it that way would make it read easier if you had like five or six things that you're doing within like one function, yeah, which is weird, but I'm gonna go along with it. So the way I do this, I I, I code in a comparative way, and afterwards I convert it to a functional way. Because going to a functional way like direct, is, I think takes more time. Yeah, yeah, I can see that too. Like, yeah, because it it so requires. You do it comparatively first, then you can now like you factor it to like a functional way. Gotcha. And that way is much better. Well, it's tough, right? Like, cause it's, it's obviously like, especially with JavaScript, it seems like most frameworks will take a little bit of functional stuff, but they'll also take some stuff with, um, with, with object oriented and try to like combine them, but you have to be aware what's object oriented and what's functional. And that's like that, that I think that, especially when I started doing more intermediate JavaScript stuff, like overwhelmed me, like it was way too much. <laughs> Cause like I didn't, I, I didn't really know functional and I also didn't really know object oriented. And so the idea of it, um, like I could repeat a bunch of this stuff, right? Like I could do a bunch of this, uh, weird stuff, but still. Cool. 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 All right. I will stop sharing. If you guys want to jump on. Okay. Um. We'll keep going. Are you guys ready? Uh, yes, let me jump over. Yeah, I'm ready. Patrick. Patrick. Yeah. Okay. Yes, six. Write arrow functions parameters. Just like a normal function, you can pass arguments into 
R function doubles input value and returns it. Const doubler equals item the big arrow item times two. You can pass more than one argument to arrow function as well. We write the, my const function which appends appends constant array one and array around to array two so that the function uses uh, arrow function syntax. User did use user did replace the uh, keyword. My constant should be constant variable by using const. My const should be a function. My const returns the uh, correct array. Function keyword was not used. First, we so what do Amen. So, we so are concatenating um, array two to array one. So we are returning it. So Write the uh, VS6. Write IR order arrow functions. It's time we use our power. We see how powerful arrow functions are when processing data. Arrow functions work really well with IR order functions such as map, that take other functions as argument for processing collections of data. With the following code FB post dot filter function post. So block return for the term with term name, not to push us to more and put the share greater than zero and put the likes. Right, we we have we have written this with Twitter to at least make it somewhat readable. Now compare it to the current code which uses arrow functions in that case. Let me put the Twitter first. This code is more submit and accomplishes the same task with fewer lines of code. Use our function syntax to compute the, the square of only the positive integers, positive integer decimals, the decimal number of the net integers in the array, real number array, and store the new array variable square integers. Square integers should be a constant variable using const. The square integer should be an array. The square integer should be this function keyword must not be not used. It should not be used. Map data variable should be used. Okay. Um, square integer is an array. Square integer is a constant. Okay.
Okay, wait, I really understand the test, test the test your code from this way because you know that way. So we are returning square into the code below this one. Oh, it actually worked. I'm hearing your fan pretty bad, DK. Yeah, it's better now. Patrick? Yeah, it's better. Okay. Um, so, uh, so again, we're separating the real number. Um, I want you to compute the square if only the number that is going through is a positive integer and uh, the positive in the other I check yeah. It. yeah. So uh, you want to filter it first. Okay. Before you map it. Okay. And you can chain them too, so it can still technically like you can run a filter before you run a map. Okay. Uh, um, okay, uh, let me do the number, number of Okay, the There you go. The number that that is determined to determine whether the first value is an integer. So, a, a, a negative value is also an integer, right? Yeah. Right. Well, so, so uh, I think there should be a function for that also. A negative value will still return true on. Yeah. If, so it's, a, if it's an actual whole number, yes. Yeah. Well, we are we are we are we are already we are also removing um, negative values, right? Or it's just right into this. Yeah. You're, so you can either set it as a, as an additional, like a like a chain conditional, or okay. The number is safe. Number is safe. Number is safe. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, okay. Uh, 
when you save integer. What is a save integer? Oh, shit. The save integer is an integer that and it's exactly represented as an ID size of the institution. Thank you. That's cool. <laughs> I mean, that helps with like, you know, math stuff. <laughs> yeah. Whatever that means. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to choose out the negative value. We even need to use drop in case this is just one parameter. Just to make it look simple. And then, uh, um, I'm going to do that. Now we can return the true uh, the true value. Mm -hmm. I think then this way. Then this way. We can return the volume. Mm -hmm. Okay, then the value is true. Remember to check the syntax for it. How okay. it's how. How it's used, but yeah, I checked. I checked it. Uh, well, like I was trying to like uh, compare it with, uh, with, like check if it's greater than zero to like break it down like that. But the, the I mean, you, the, you can still that, do that. that. Yeah. No, no, that, that function that is it the, the function actually returns a boolean, so I can't right. compare. I can't do that. If it returns like the values now. Oh yeah, yeah. I would have I mean, been able to it, it. Like so, it, it returns like so. Technically, it returns like a truth or falsity, right? Like when you compare. Yeah, truth or false. Yeah, so I can't compare that. So I'm, I'll look for a way to like. I think first fit out like the negative values before. Oh, okay. So. Uh, but I get what you're trying to do. You're just trying to use one. Uh, yeah. One whole <laughs> conditional statement rather than try to chain a bunch next to each other. That if I get the function that actually filters out negative values too, I can just 
add it, add like few, add it to the first filter, this thing, then add the map um, function, add map map function to the last part. I think I found one. Mat the sign function returns the sign of a, of a number, indicating whether the number is posted. <laughs> I found one. <laughs> Mat the sign. Mm, yeah. Minus three, that puts negative. How do I use this? Hey, DK, just so you're aware, you can run a, multiple conditionals on one filter, right? Oh, okay. Rather than running multiple filters, like... Okay. Uh, okay, after I do this, I would have to just... Uh, I would have to add, like, because I'll be using more than one line, right? Well, you can... So, so um, with this return, right? You're just, you're, you're, it's explicit, or is it explicit in the sense that what you want? So you want things that are over, like, that are positive, so they're above zero, and they are also an integer. Oh, okay, right? yeah, yeah. Like, okay, so that's I can just add. Cause in, okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> I, just, I, I get it. I was doing the same thing with that whole dumb, like, array, like, indexes, where I was trying to, like, assign the new okay, value. Uh, what value. those sign? Then a negative value returns, um, zero returns false, a negative value also returns true. So, uh, I the not sign. Um, also returns minus one. If 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 um if um if that um zero. Yeah. I think since um the math that function returns um minus one if the if the, if the value is negative. Return zero if the value is zero. Returns um one if the value is um one. Yeah, but if, if the value if is the positive, value. sorry. So this this yeah. one if, if when the um the when the when each when one of the um when the value from the array one of them enters the return if if the value is um is uh positive the return one. So if it's equal to them, this one return a true a true value. Return true. I mean. I mean, if it equal like in the sense that like if it's if it's over one like yeah it, it triple equals one it should return it should, it should return like, true so if it's zero it won't, it won't go through if it's uh minus one it won't go through so what both of this uh okay wait, hold on is an integer this one returns the value itself i'm returning the value not the truth value so what i mean is not correct um,
Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, I'm good. Did you guys ever do the ES6 stuff? That's what we're working on. Yeah, that's what we're building right now. We just started to do it. We did uh, objects yesterday through the MDM articles. Okay, cool. So how many of the ES6 ones do I need to do to catch up right now? Uh, not Probably not that much. Let's about go through. Four, five. Let me see. Yeah, it's literally like we've done... We're waiting on you guys for like about two, some... Like we did like one hour. Seven. We've done seven. So. Seven, all right, cool. We're not that far. I'll catch up real quick. Let me see if this first one works good. Or I think... I the future. I think this one should work. I think I will tell you that. Remember that the is integer is not. It's on the the number method, right? Like so, it's it's the number object. So it it needs to know in the parameter. It needs to know what it, it needs to check as an integer. Because right now you're calling the method on on the uh, specific array index. Oh, okay. Without passing in. Okay, okay, sorry. No, no, you're good. I just <laughs> that's probably why you're not returning. You're getting anything back, right? Because it's 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 only on the number object. Yeah. Okay. 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 Now I have to like um, filter out the um, minus two. So, right. So like something in this in the vein of anything that's over like if the specific number is over the value of zero, like zero or or more. Right. Like if it's, as long as it's not negative. Okay. If I um if it um is it if it um zero, right? Yeah, that'll work. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So now I, I just use the map to square it. Right. And so, yeah, so you're based, so you're using that first filter. I'm sure you know, like you're using it to remove all the things that you're not going to do. And yeah, so that last one, I just need to open the remaining array. Basically, whatever, whatever's remaining is your, it will work. Yeah, is what you prefer uh, to do uh, with it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, was, I, was, I was all complicating the issue. <laughs> Okay, you, man, um, it happens, especially with the S6. <laughs> or especially when you're like trying to use the same uh, syntax of ES6. I was like, like oh, you didn't use it. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Now I think I uh, should go in. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, so. Oh, I need to download this particular uh, uh, this thing. So I need to open it later. Okay, let's go ahead. ES6, set default parameters for, for your functions. In order to help us create more flexible functions, ES6 introduces default parameters for functions. Check out this code. Function written. Name equals anonymous return hello plus name. Also, dot log greeting. Then, hello John. Also, dot log greeting. Hello anonymous. The four parameter kicks in. This is undefined, as you can see in the example of the parameter name. You see its default value on anonymous when you do not provide the value for the parameter. You can add default values for any for, for as many parameters as you want. Modify the from function implement by adding default parameters so that to add it, to add one to norm if value is not specified. Okay, so uh, add one to number. Hmm. 
got one number equally different. You don't know the same. No, 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 no. Okay. So should I go on? Um, Adam. Yeah, uh, I got it. Okay. Just assigning the value of one. Yeah. Okay. So when you call, you just as a, as a, you don't, you don't, yeah, you don't have to like um, if you uh, don't assign any value to um, any uh, any value to value the value variable, it would actually still be cool because right that it has been initialized already, so you can just be uh, initialize it with the new value if you need it, if you want we need something else for the value. Right. Yeah. These these sometimes confuse like this and currying when you like essentially create a partial function to do something and then you add on top of it. I'm not sure if you've like under like gone through that subject of currying. It's super dumb and I'm sure it makes sense like in a very practical application, but I still haven't found one that like which it's it's really just like cutting up you're cutting up the parameters, but you're still running the function. And it's basically every parameter that you put in when you run the function is like basically like storing it in memory. So technically you're putting it like each individual parameter is really just like a second, third, fourth, like it adds on to it. It's stupid. <laughs> it's super, super stupid. It doesn't uh, make okay. sense. Um, but this, yeah, this kind of like isn't the same thing like with the default, right? With like a, so if you don't put, like if you only put one, if you have two parameters and you set the second parameter as like a default, like yeah. something, and then you only- So there's like a one. default um, default value yeah. for you. So even if you don't, like those are some very important functions. But like, but like you, know, you, don't, right. if you, you don't need to initialize. You, you don't need to pass any um, value for this particular parameter. If you want, only if you want to change something else, you can pass it. But if you don't pass it, the function is still wrong. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. Like if that, I'm sure that helps, especially um, when you're writing bigger things. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, VS6. Use the REST operator with the function parameters. In order to help us create more flexible functions, ES6 introduces the REST operator for function parameters with the REST operator. With the REST operator, you can create functions that take a variable number of arguments. These arguments are stored in an array that can be accessed, accessed later from inside the function. Check out this code. Um, function how many dot dot ARGS, similar to Python. Run, you should have passed plus air dot length argument. Okay. The rest of uh, operator eliminates the need to check the the the, uh, the arg array and allows you to apply map filter reduce on the parameter array. Modify the function sum so that it uses the rest operator and it works in the same way with any number of parameters. Okay, use that to just accumulate the whole um, the array of parts in it. Data is this to the array. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's see the next ES6, use this spread operator to evaluate arrays in, in place. ES6 introduces the spread operator, which allows us to expand 
arrays and other expressions and places where multiple parameters or arguments are expected. The ES5 code below uses apply to com compute the maximum value in an array. Var, uh, var array equals 689.385. Var maxim maximus equals mark dot max dot apply. No array returns 89. That's the highest value in the array. We have to use max max dot max dot apply no array because max dot max array returns none. But array dot max dot max dot max expect comma separated argument but not an array. The spread operator makes this uh, syntax much better to read and maintain. But uh, returns um, returns an unpacked array in other words express the, uh, the array. However, the spread operator only works in place like in an argument to a function or in an array literal. The following code will not work. Constant, 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 I will throw a syntax error. Copy all the contents of I1 into the into another array, another array or two using the spread key spread operator. So Okay. I two is is this correct copy of I one. What what was spread operator was used to duplicate the I one. Have I two means on change when I one change. I think I'll ask to do it exactly because I don't get, I don't actually get the spread keyword is to pick a little.
three returns and in fact the in other words express the Are you stuck on this one? I don't even understand what I'm trying to post to do that. Like that's the first thing. Um, so it says um, the spread operator only works in place, like in an argument or in an array literal. Okay. Like that's the key word in that whole uh, instruction. Because uh, all they want you to do is copy the contents of array one and assign it to the uh, to the value or assign it to the variable array two, specifically using the spread Which operator. Is dot, dot, dot. Right. But you can't right. use dot, dot, dot on its own. It's got to be in parentheses as a parameter or in an array literal. Right. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Oh, sure. Hmm. 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 Uh, yeah, can I push an OR it's like how about you reset the code to show yeah. what it originally was on there? So I, I, I will just change this 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 the um because it there was an empty array literal on there. There you go. Oh, okay. So, Bang bang! Oh bang. wow! Okay, 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 I get it now. Now, why you can use push to push an array uh, spread like that? It won't mm -hmm. let you do it on this challenge. So you could like set array two as an empty array, and then a line down push uh, the spread operator on array one, and it'll still work. Okay. But it won't pass the free code <laughs> the gap one. Yeah, the test is already set for like this particular uh, module, so we have to like read the test. Okay. Um, use this this uh, the structure mean assignment to assign variables from objects. We saw earlier how spread operator can efficiently spread mm -hmm. and compact. Or unpack the content of an array. We can do we can do something similar with object as well. The structure the structuring assignment is special is special syntax for neatly assigning values taken directly from an object to variables. Most of the following is five code bar for equals x. Yes, there's the same assignment statement with ESC destructuring syntax. So X, Y, Z, we will. Okay. 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 If instead you want to store the values of the world of X into A, world of Y into B, world of Z equal to the up to you have that freedom as well. Um, constant A, A, Y, B, you go well. Okay. You may read it as get the field X and copy the value into A, and so on. Use the structuring to obtain the average temperature for tomorrow from the input object, average temperature, and assign the value with the key tomorrow temperature tomorrow in, um, in line so the test uh, get temp of tomorrow average temperature should be 29 the structure in which the assignment was used okay. Maybe you should to obtain your 
of temperature for the smaller from the impure object average and we can assign the values with t small to Yes, it's use the shortcut assignment to assign variables from nested objects. Then similarly, the structure nested object into variables. Consider the following code. Yes, of course. Start. In the example above, the variable start is assigned the value of a dot start, which is also an object. Use the children assignment to obtain max of forest cast of tomorrow and assign it to max of tomorrow. Test max of tomorrow equals it's in 4.6. Let's say the structuring was used. Okay. Uh, you should be 84.6 in terms of this particular line. Uh, if we came from this array, uh, this um, object, here from this object. Okay. So, um, max, max of forest, but tomorrow, okay. this particular line. So we are um, we are picking from this array. So if we pass them here, so picking from this array, this one is the second um, um second um key in the array. I'm sorry, in the, in the object. Then the object contains uh, the, the 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 key as a value of an object also. Then we have to do the same by um, assigning new variable marks of tomorrow to this particular uh, 
key in this uh, sub 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 object which is which has value of eight point six. So Okay. Yes, six. Use the structuring assignment to assign variables from arrays. Yes, six makes uh, the structuring arrays as easy as the structuring object. One key difference between the spread operator and array structuring is that the spread operator of packs all contents of an array into a comma separated list. Consequently, consequently. You, can, you cannot pick or choose which elements you want to assign to variables. The structuring an array lets us do exactly that. Const uh, a, b equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Console.log a, b. Uh, the, variable, the variable a is assigned the first value of, an, of the array, b is assigned the second value of the array. You can also um, assess the value at an index in an array with the structuring by using commas to, to reach the desired index. Const a, b, comma, 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 c, which is first, second, third, fourth, fifth. So c is assigned to five, the fifth value. You const that log a, b, c, this. They use the structuring assignment to swap the values of an array of array A and B so that A receives the value stored in B and B receives the value stored in A. In the test uh, statement value of A should be 6 after swapping, value of B should be 8 after swapping. Use array structuring to swap A and B. Uh,
use the structure in assignment with the rest, with the rest operator to reassign array elements in in some situation involving in some situations involving array restructuring, you might want to um, collect the rest of the elements in a separate array. The result is similar to array that prototype slice as shown below. A B because A B N this one will take the rest from three to seven. Yes. So that A B how we take it. variables A and B take the first first and second values from the array. After that, because of the rest, rest of rest of operators, to that person array gets rest of the values in the form of an array. The rest element only works correctly as the last variables in the list. As in, you cannot use the rest operator to catch a sub array that leaves out the um, last element of the original array. Use the structuring assignments with the rest operator to perform an effective array of prototype slice so that the so that array is a sub array of the original array source with the first two elements omitted. Hey, DK. Um I missed the solution for that last one. Oh, okay. Thank okay. you. Um, yeah, you know they've already declared um, the declared A and B here. Yeah? So mm -hmm. using the uh, the structure and we um, we just pick them. We don't have to like we declare we declare them again. Then we take the A, B. Oops, sorry. A, B. Then we assign them to the new values, which is. Um, which is six, eight. But isn't that like hard coding it and as opposed to, like what if the numbers A and B changed? Oh, sorry, oh, um, can you read it this way? Still works. There you go, okay. Yeah, I, I see what I was doing. I was reinitializing the. Yeah, hey, that was why I did the initialization. I thought since we already declared it, I just removed the um, the declaration of variable, and I just um, assigned them um, naturally. Okay, that makes sense. Now I know why I was in passing. Yeah. Um, the. Assignment with the rest of it to perform an effective radar prototype of slice so that the R is, an, is a sub array of the original resource with the first two elements omitted. Array should be 3 to 10. The structuring should be used. Array the slice should not be used. Okay. Um, First, this is the source array, which is a constant. We use the filter assignment with the rest operator to perform an effective array of the slice so that array R is, is the sub array of the original array with the first two elements omitted. So, um, between this, um, we come out, come out, we're making the first two, then uh, hmm. Hmm.
We are meeting the first two elements, then assigning the root. Oh, we the new this is we should use this we should use this okay. mm. so, um, since I was not in the clear we need to be clear. I don't know. 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 I in some situations involving array destruction, we might want to collect the rest of the elements into a separate um, array. The result is similar to array the prototype of slice as shown below. Const a b dot 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 separate uh, the rest keyword a r r. Okay. Okay. Rebu a. Variable A and B takes first and second values from the array. And after, after that, because of rest operator presence, array gets, gets rest of the values in the, in the form of an array. The, the rest um, element only works correctly as the last variable in the list. As in, you cannot use the rest operator to catch the sub array that leaves out uh, last element of the original array. Use the structuring assignment with the rest of it to perform an effective array the slice so that R is a sub array of the original array source with first two element omitted. Ah, this was the one I did before. Okay. Okay. Use the structuring assignment to pass an object as a function's parameter. Yeah, in some cases, you can destructure the object in a function argument itself. Consider the code below. Once profile update equals profile update, profile update or big arrow, once name, age, or nationality, location, profile data. Do something with, the, with these variables. Uh, Effect, this effectively restructures the object sent into the function. This is also, this can also be done in, done in place. Um, um, profile of the request, name, age, nationality, location. And I'll do something with this. Okay. Passing an object into the function. We should move some extra lines and mix our code with mix. This add, this add the, the, this add, this has, this has the added benefit of not having to manipulate an entire object in the function. Only, only the fields that are needed are copied inside the function. Use the token assignment within the argument to, to the function of send only max and mean inside the function on the test stats should be an object half stats should be 28.215 the structure was used okay and start this from half equals function you string do not change this line change okay we are changing this 
Come change. You can change. You just show me the same thing with the argument to something of the same words and mean. Okay, this is my last one. Um, create string using template literals. A new uh, feature of ES6 is the template literals. I think we talked about it yesterday. So this is a special type of um, string that makes creating complex string easy easier. Template literals allow you to create multiple line strings and to use string interpolation features to create string. Consider the following below. Const, um, First thing, name Zodiac as well, age 56. Template trials with multiple line and string interpolation. Constituting equals um, back. Okay. Hello, my name is this. Yes, console the log written prints out. Hello, my name is Zodiac as I am 56 years old. Okay. So, a lot of things happened there. First, the example uses back ticks, not quotes to wrap the um, string. Secondly, notice that the string is multi line both in the code and the output. This saves inserting uh, backslash n within the string. The um, from dollar sign curly bracket variable syntax used above is a placeholder. Basically, you won't have to use the concatenation with the plus operator anymore. To add variables to strings, you just drop the um, variable in the template string and wrap it with um, dollar sign um, and curly bracket. Similarly, similarly, you can include other expressions in your string literals for example, um, dollar sign um, curly bracket A plus B. This new ways of creating um, string gives you more flexibility to create robust strings. Use template literal syntax with parts to display each entry of the result object object failure array. Each um, entry should be wrapped inside an li um, element with the class attribute text warning and list within the result display array. Okay, so um, <laughs> let's check out the test statements. The result dis display array is an array of containing result failure messages. Okay. Result display array. Okay. This. The result of display is the dis is desired output. Template string. Template strings were used. Okay. 
make list return you should return li this way this and this I think this should be found at least in the key. Now we use the different back to display the entry of the result object failure array. Each entry should be wrapped inside the airline statement with the um for with the um class attribute type now and listed listed with the results.
Um, guys, um, I'm stopping the. I'm so. I will stop sharing now. Okay. Um, I'll do the next few. Why don't we go ahead and take a ten minute break? All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds good. Or we'll go fifteen since we've been going a while. <laughs> so right. nine thirty or okay. half hour. That's three yeah. fifty. Yeah, so. Cool. I will pause. All right. Can y'all see my screen? Yeah. Okay. All right. ES six. Right. Concise object literal declarations using simple fields. ES6 adds some nice support for easily defining object literals. Consider the following code. Uh, get mouse position equals um, the parameters and it returns an object where x equals the x parameter, y equals the y parameter. Get mouse position is a simple function that returns an object containing two fields. ES6 provides the synthetic syntactic sugar to eliminate the redundancy of having to write x is x. You can simply write x once and it will be converted to x is x or something equivalent under the hood. Here is the same function from above rewritten to use this new syntax. So you got your get mouse position, your parameters, and then return parentheses. And in those parentheses is curly brackets and X and Y, which I guess are your keys. So it says use simple fields with object literals to create and return a person object. The output should be this and no colons are used. So here it's returning the name, age, and gender. So I could probably move all this stuff up here. Let's just move this down and I'll erase it. Actually, it says change code below this line, so it's not asking us to do it up there. So, could I just take out name, age, and gender like that? Will that work? Find out. Looks like it does. You could probably put all that on one line, huh? That still works. Submit and go to the next challenge. Okay, ES6, write concise declarative functions with ES6. When defining functions within objects in ES5, we have to use the keyword function as follows. The person's an object, say hello, it's the key, and it says function, and you have a function here. With ES6, you can remove the function keyword and colon all together when defining functions and objects. Here's an example of the syntax. So here is just say hello with a parentheses to show it's a function and your block right here. Refact refractor, refactor the function set gear inside the bicycle object bicycle to use the shorthand syntax described above. So all you need is take out the colon and the function, and that should be it, right? So set gear, new gear, and then this dot gear equals new gear. Okay, that works. 
ES6, use class syntax to define a constructor function. ES6 provides a new syntax to help create objects using the word class. This is to be noted that, class, that the class syntax is just a syntax, not a full-fledged class-based implementation of object-oriented paradigm, unlike in languages like Java or Python or Ruby. In ES5, we usually define a constructor function and use the new keyword to instantiate an object. So space shuttle equals function with target planet. This dot target planet equals the target planet parameter. So Zeus is a new equals a new space shuttle, Jupiter. So target planet would be Jupiter in the space shuttle object, or actually the Zeus object. The class syntax simply replaces the constructor function creation. So you have class space shuttle, curly brackets, constructor, and then your parameter, and then this dot target planet equals target planet. So Zeus equals new space shuttle Jupiter would work the same. Um, Pat, yeah. I think I already did in like the last of uh, challenge. So I'm pretty sure I'm just trying to do it. Uh, gotta go back to the last challenge. Yeah, I'm there, I'm there. Yeah, good just, good you, just. you need help on this one? Uh, yeah. Okay, so if we reset the code, you see here set gear and it's, it's got a colon and it says function right yeah. here. Okay. So with ES6, you don't need the colon or the function to declare a function within an object. You just do that. Okay. So you uh, have set, set gear, new gear, and then your function stuff. Okay. As I'm, I'm confused on de deconstructing or destructuring. Uh, which one are you on? I'm on use destructuring assignment to assign variables from objects. No, oh, okay, this one. Yeah, I don't really get how to like use the parameter average temperatures inside of this. Okay, so for this one, to destructure, you want something that looks similar to this right here. So you have yeah. const. Okay, so you're going to want this within your curly brackets, right? The weird thing about this is that um, if you look at this right here, is that the variables actually come second. So like your these are your variables you're setting them to, and then the ones in the front are what's getting set to those variables. So for this, would you just do tomorrow, tomorrow? Yeah, you would do tomorrow, and then a colon like that. And then for right here would be your parameter, which is average temperatures right here. So when they plug this object into average temperatures, it'll pull the tomorrow key right here, value, and assign it to temp of tomorrow. And that's how you end up with 79 down here. Uh, okay, I get it. Yeah, you get so used to, like, the thing that threw me up, is you get so used to, like, let be equal dog. Yeah. But, like, this is, like, backwards. So it'd be, like const dog and then whatever variable you're setting it to like b yeah and i was just getting really confused on like how to object. use the parameter but i think i get like where the parameter how the parameter like plugs into it mm -hmm. all right cool you guys can go back i think i can get through these now all right thank you no problem So we are on the class syntax here. 
uh, notice that the class keyword declares a new function and a constructor was added, which would oh, be invoked oh, when new is called. Five. Yeah. Five. I don't say it's like seven behind. Yeah, I'm like seven. I'm way back because oh, I've way been back? like slowly. Yeah. But no, you guys can keep going. It's fine. I'm no, no, no. We don't want to leave anybody behind. Uh, we, can, we can go back and we uh, work yeah, on this so or wait know. on you. Or we can wait on you to work on them yourself. And if you need help, you could. No, you're fine. Yeah, it just it took me like you know. <laughs> just take, to, like, take, no, take, take your time. Take your time. We we'll wait on you. I'll share yes. your so who's further behind, you or Jamie Doe? Jamie Doe's you know, on destructuring. What are you on? I'm on destructuring like assignment to assign variables from arrays. So. Oh, okay. I think um, Adam is far is uh, much behind that. Uh, so, um, Adam, share your screen. Okay. Well, Jay Mato is on the variables from nested objects, right? Yeah, I'm on nested objects. Yeah, well, sh share your screen since yeah, uh, you're one understand. behind Adam. Yeah. Share my screen? Yeah, share your uh, free code camp screen. Okay. So, you can just like talk yourself through you know, while you're doing these. Um, okay. That way, you know, we'll just wait till you, you two catch up. And then I know it's hard to write code like when you hear other people talking in the background about something totally different. <laughs> so we have an object A. Yeah, the problem like for this one or the that one is like I was the previous two I got stuck on because I was being very specific with the actual like object that they were defining. As opposed to realizing like it was just assigning stuff with the object. But now I'm good. Okay. So use destructor and assignment to obtain max of forecast dot tomorrow and assign it to max of tomorrow. So we want to get this equal to forecast. Yeah. <laughs> Let me wait. So the first one is our, is the first one the variable name or the thing that we're getting? Yeah, the first one's the thing you're getting, the key. Okay. But since that's nested, you're going to have to have another set of curly brackets in there. Like this. Uh, if you look at the example, notice they have start, colon, and then curly brackets, and then x, um, colon, start x. Okay, let me just see if I can kind of mimic that right now. So by doing tomorrow, it's going to go into this. Yep. We do the, this bracket. Uh, max double bracket cool Go. so this is where you are too right now Adam yeah I'm right here all right cool so ES6 makes destructoring arrays as easy as destructoring objects. One key difference between the spread operator and array destructoring is that the spread operator unpacks all contents of an array into a comma-separated list. Consequently, 
You cannot pick or choose which elements you want to assign to variables. Deconstructing an array lets us do exactly that. So constant a, b equals. I don't get what this is saying right here. This is. Oh, is this just getting the first two values of the array? Yeah, basically. OK. Oh, that's going to get confusing. A lot of commas. So that A receives the value stored in B, and B receives the value stored in A. OK. <laughs> Wait. Let A equals 8 and B equals 6. Is that my food? Okay, I'm going to let you take this real quick because I think my food just came. Okay, I'll jump. Right. I'm trying to figure out, so the left of it is what you're actually wanting. No, because they're just variables. You, you have the right idea, Adam. And the problem I ran into uh -huh. this one is initializing variables. Oh, for here? Uh, oh. Uh, so it's on the left-hand side that I'm, that I'm having? Yeah. OK. You can't be this stupid, right? Don't feel bad. I did the exact same thing until DK explained it to me. <laughs> no, that's not it. Uh, huh. So using destructuring, swap the values of A and B so that A receives the value B, and B restores the value of B. A should be six after swapping. We should use array destructuring to swap. So here's what you're doing pretty much is you're saying const A equals B and const B equals A. Right. But what's the problem in doing that, doing it that way without using destructuring? What would be the problem with that? Doesn't it make a copy of us or wouldn't it? Uh, yeah. If you were to do A, plus, if you were to assign A equals B and B mm -hmm. equals A. Um, Oh, when it one once I switch over A equals B, when it when it get all wonky. No, it's the fact that you're using const on a variable that's already been declared with lit. Seriously, <laughs> that's it. That's all that that's is. That's all that is. That's garbage. Like you can't use let twice or const twice. You don't even have to initialize it again. Oh yeah, what am I doing? Because it's already been declared. Because I'm looking at the left hand example. That's why. <sighs> so stupid. Okay. So in that case, so because of this has been declared as let, I should be like, you're right, like I shouldn't have to worry about that, but because I keep looking at these examples that already have something. Yeah, that's what hung me up on that one. I was like, why is it not working? <laughs> it's typed <laughs> exactly the same way. I know, well, I did the same thing uh, two questions ago. Uh, like I said, like I was literally using the object names and not like the function assuming an object and like 
I was getting super frustrated because it was taking like 15 minutes. I was like, why is it not working? Right. It's like, oh, yeah, because I'm just treat like, because I'm treating it for a specific use case and not for the example that the object parameter being used. Cool. Bang, bang, bang. Okay. So um, if in the case that this wasn't established, if it was under here, okay. Cool. So. Yeah, but so like if it was like those, the A and B were parameters and not actual variables and. Right, in here. Yeah. Okay. Then I could, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess I should be more familiar with scoping and the, the nature of using let and const seems to restrict a lot more things. Yeah. Okay. Which is a good thing. It should be. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Dope, dope, dope. All right. So use destruction assignments with REST operator to reassign array elements. In some situations involving array destructuring, we might want to collect the rest of the elements into a separate array. The result is similar to array to, to the slice method, right? Okay. I see. A, B, and then everything else. A, B takes the first and the second element, and then everything else is thrown into the array at the variable. Cool. Right? So use the destructuring method of the REST operator to perform an effective slice so that array is a subarray of the original source with two elements omitted. Okay. Array should be three, four, five, six, seven. Destruction should be used and slice shouldn't be used. All right, so. Return array. So I want to take the same concept, right? I'm doing, I'm declaring one, two, and the rest of the array. And that will equal list, which is that. Nope. Nope. Maybe. Oh, I have to declare it, don't I? Yeah, I have to declare it. Okay, so in this scenario, I have to declare it because I haven't, this is all new. Like it doesn't, it's not aware. See, I'm gonna get super confused by using the, this you can is. Do it, you, can, I think you can do it in other ways. Just try to think about it. Um, since you can um, always um, um, pick the part of um, the array you want to uh, uh -huh. you want to assign to a new variable without even you can just pick that part and leave the rest you get since you can do that then um, a and b are not needed since they're just looking for looking from the value from the top so you can just use comma only you know, to just um, oh oh i see what you mean like like the yeah, previous yeah, you can do i don't yeah, need to tell you. okay so so this is really just like Skip yeah, it. So it says you don't need those ones, so you can just skip it. I see. Instead of assigning them to a to, um, to the variable, value. so. Okay. So skip, skip, and then everything else. So it returns three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and the original source is unchanged. Okay. So yeah, so it is like slice, but I guess um, you don't have to use slice, so that's nice. <laughs> Cool, okay, that makes sense. It's weird, but it makes sense. <laughs> huh. Okay, well, I guess it's nice when, you're right, yeah. I guess it's, it's, 
it's maybe because I've learned JavaScript way, like you have to declare everything, but I guess it's nice if you have like, um, within yeah. arguments, like you can take a section beyond whatever, and you don't even have to name them if you're never going to use them. Yeah. So. Yeah, just to pick the word up. So I can see the, the use case for it. Cool. All right, so we used structuring assignment to pass an object as a functions parameter. So in some cases, you destructure the object in a function argument itself. Oh, I see. Right, so we take, if profile data is an object, we can take the properties from each of them uh, to effectively destructure the object sent to the function. This can be done in place. Oh, dope. Okay. But I guess this implies that there's a name, age, nationality, and location um, property within each, like with it, when you're calling that object as a parameter. Cool. Well, it's still cool. So. That should be an object. F stash twenty eight destruction was used. So, with this shorthand, you don't have to actually do it in the second line. It's just assuming that same thing within here. That there's a max and min within this object. And then half dot stacks. Oh, no, I'm going the wrong way, aren't I? Hold on, there we go. Half dot stats. because it's returning a function. So this is what I need to fix. Okay. Uh, no, but it needs something, doesn't it? So max min. So this should still run since we're still just we're taking okay so we're assuming there's a max and min property and we're returning that five by two to get an average cool it's shockingly simple Again, I guess that's nice, especially with like a JSON object with like 20 million unnecessary properties that you can just pull in the properties that you need when you're making an API call and just specifically deal with whatever properties that you're passing. Cool. Okay. So. Uh, string, create strings using template variables. Yeah, new features, special type, blah, 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 right, right, right. Multi-line, use the back ticks. It allows you to do multi-line rather than have a plus sign every time you press enter for a new line. And then dollar sign 
bracket. Cool. Okay. Uh, so use temperate literal syntax with backticks to display each entry of the results object failure array. Each entry will be wrapped inside an li element with the class attribute text warning listed within the result display array. Cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Result display array is the desired output. Tempest strings were used. Oh, I see. Okay, so it should turn that. Cool. Uh, so I guess rather than null, it should be an empty. Array. Actually, no, I guess it can, ugh, no, because they'd want me to do a dumb. Why is it just as const? Whatever. <sighs> whatever, whatever, whatever. Don't care. Don't care no more. Don't care. Um, Adam. Uh-huh. Since you're supposed since you're returning result display array, you're supposed to assign the result from from the loop, from what you're loop from the um from the loop what you're looping through. You're supposed to assign it to um result display. So you can just um assign it the const const result display. You can assign it that way oh. instead of um writing it. Okay, so just. Yeah, all right. So, how about I just do that then? Yeah. All right. Just so you can just return the, um, the output from the, from the loop. Array dot map. All right. So, let's we'll call it an item for now. And then, uh, li. Class. Okay. Hi, Dad. Kiddo. Homework is for Daddy. Hi, Dad. Hi, Daddy. What are you doing? Thank you. Okay. So, class. Is text warning and close the OI and then within each of these is the item, right? So we can console dot log. Result display array. My class test wandering. Dope. <coughs> warning. Uh, no warning, no var. Am I done? Talk. <coughs> cool. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, 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 cool. And realistically, you can probably just yeah. 
Not bad. Okay. <clears throat> Oof, this is going to suck. Okay, write concise object literal declarations using simple fields. Uh, ES6 adds some nice support, easily defining object literals. Considering this code. Oh, actually, that's not terrible. Get most possession as a simple function that returns an object containing two fields. Oh, oh, nice. Okay. Yes, this provides a syntactic sugar to eliminate redundancy. Oh, uh, okay. So rather than having it like whatever the input of x is equal x within a property, you're just writing it once and it just assumes that it's just going to repeat that. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So, 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 so. So it's going to be this. So name, age, and gender. So. I'm going to guess it. For that purpose. Cool. That's going to return. Name, age, and gender. Cool. So when we return an object, okay. It's not that terrible. Cool, 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 cool. All right. So under funny functions, we know the keyword function as follows. All right, with the A6, you can move the function keyword and colon all together, we functions as an object. So just the function or the method name in parentheses. Here's two secure equals a function. Cool. Uh, ES6. This, is, this is where we stopped also. Oh, cool. All right. So I'm back up. Cool. All right. I'll hold on. What about, what about, um, yeah, Jim. let me check in on. What about the other guy? Um, Mindu. I don't think he's back yet. Yeah, I think he might be eating. Uh, I'm following along. I'm eating, but I'm following along. Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. <laughs> all right. Did you all want me to, I guess, should we jump back on now? Yeah, Since you can read. You can continue. Just read it, read, read it out loud so we can. Cool. No problem. All right. So ES6, use class syntax to define a constructor function. ES6 provides a new syntax to help create objects using the keyword class. 
this is to be noted that the class syntax is just syntax, or just a syntax, and not a full-fledged class based on the implementation of an object or a paradigm, unlike languages in Java, Python, Ruby, et cetera. In ES5, we normally, or we usually define a constructor function. We use the new keyword to instantiate an object. So, yeah, we call it space shuttle, which is a function which takes a parameter of target plan and assigns this dot target plan equals or target planet, sorry, target planet. Uh, so, and then we declare uh, Zeus to equal a new space shuttle with the parameter Jupiter. Uh, the class syntax simply replaces the constructor function creation. So class space shuttle, uh, curly brace, constructor, constructor uh, with the parameter of target planet. Uh, same thing, this dot target planet equals target planet. And then, so we do this on uh, uh, MDN yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's starting to become a little familiar. <laughs> So notice that the class keyword declares a new function and a constructor was added, which would be invoked when the new is called to create a new object. Use, okay, so for this assignment, use the class keyword and write a proper constructor to create the vegetable class. The vegetable lets you create a vegetable object with the proper name to be passed to the constructor. So requirements for vegetables should be a class with the defined uh, constructor method, class keyword uh, is used, vegetable can be instantiated, and caret.name should return caret. Cool. This one. Okay, all right. So, uh, I guess class, we'll start out with the class. And Vegetable, open some curly braces, and then within it we'll have a constructor. I guess it'll be name, right. and then this dot name equals name. So it's a constructor of the class, constructor, we define the name property. I think that's right. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Nope, pretty simple. Cool. It's not that crazy, maybe. Cool. Are you guys ready for the next one, or should I wait? I'm good to go. Cool. TK, are you good? I'm good, too. I'm good, but I just want to understand uh, the um, we're creating a class within the function. Does that make sense? Y yeah, that's weird, right? That's like, that's problem. Creating the class is not an issue, but we're creating a class within a function, too. So that's like confusing to me yeah i think this is more for the specifics sample right so we we basically created a vegetable class we're supposed um, to create a function within 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 a different function within the class not the other way around um but right. what do you have to say to this yeah i don't understand why they did it but i don't need i mean <laughs> i know <laughs> I mean, how to make a class yeah exactly <laughs> it's pretty easy but I don't know why they did it in a function for make class and then make a constant with the exact same name as a class. I don't right. know. I, my assumption would be at some point, if it got more complicated, they would start to like, so they would use a parameter that would allow you to like take over the name for class. Right. Like, and that then, would make sense. So you can build that out, but like for this example, they're not, they're, they're like, we're more concerned that you get this part done. But maybe I don't know. It's still weird. Yeah, it's an empty function that's just creating a class. Like, it's it's unnecessary. But yeah, yeah it's a function that's creating a class. I guess. Right. 
rather than you just creating a class like a normal, like every other normal. You can, you can see um, um, the, uh, outside the function, they, um, they uh, initialize the make class function, then initialize it to vegetable, then they use vegetable to pass the um, carrot within vegetable to, um, I don't see, I'm so confused. Yeah, it's I feel like they, I feel like they do it like in different ways to show you that it can be used differently. But it's, yeah, I guess that's fair. That's, that's true. I guess yeah, because I never think of creating a function that would have hold the class, but that's still uh, uh, open source. This is what happens. Uh, <laughs> you take what you can get. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Hold on. Oh, we can see. Um, after creating the class. Where we turn in the class with the make uh, make class function, right? Where we turn in that class. So when we call that, uh, when we call the class, we are getting when we call the function. So we are getting the class and return. You understand now? Oh, so so we're we're like creating... the return value of the class. Well, the return value of the function is the class. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's so weird we getting... because like. It's, yeah, it's, it's only weird, vegetable, but... right? Like, so, so it's making class, but like this yeah. only class you're going to return is a class of vegetable. Like, yes. it would make more sense to, to create. Uh... Yeah, I understand the logic of the code now, but it just doesn't really make sense as in, like, <laughs> why would you do that? Like, you can just create the class. <laughs> I kind of get if it was like class noun or something. Right. So, like, yeah. you could use it. Okay, I don't know. It's confusing to me. Let's <laughs> move uh, on. Cool. All right. Hey, look at that. Using getters and setters to access control uh, of an object. <laughs> I still don't understand it, but maybe this will make sense again. We'll see. We'll see if they have a better explanation. <laughs> All right. So you can obtain values from an object and set value to a property within an object. These are classes called getters and setters. Getter functions are meant to simply return the value of an object's private variable to the user without the user directly accessing the private variable. Okay. So you can say that, it's private. It's security. Yeah. It's more security. That makes more sense now. So yeah, it is specifically because it's private. Okay, cool. Setters are meant to modify the set, uh, the value of an object's private variable based on the value passed into the setter function. This change could involve calculations or even overriding the previous example or previous value completely. Okay. So getters and setters, the only reason why you would do that is, is if you have something like, so yeah, this dot author, um, yeah. so they, like, it's, it's not accessible by the, like if they opened up the console log, they can't change the author's name because it's within the constructor. Yeah. So they but, mentioned private variable, but they Never explained exactly what a private variable is. You so can far. Google that. <clears throat> um, 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 Adam, just try to Google private variables or something on in JavaScript so we can see what comes up. I better spell this right because it's going to get. I don't want Zoom to know. <laughs> <laughs> I can see misspelling private variable and it getting real, real problem. <laughs> All right. Uh, so JavaScript, uh, variable. variables, there you go. Very private methods. Oh, all right, Phil Walton, thanks. Jesus. Uh, private numbers in JavaScript. Hey, I think you, I think, open that. This one from Douglas Crockford? Yeah. Of course, he's like Douglas. Objects, public, okay. Um, so they're public members. Members of an object. So, any container. Okay. So you can create just regular stuff that's available. You can use the prototype to return stuff. So here's, so private members are made by the structure. Uh, 
right here, bars and parameters of constructors can become private members. This constructor takes three private instances. Oh Lord, Douglas Crawford, come on. So is that saying that oh. if you do a sorry, go ahead. If you do a object like it says function container parameter whatever is a, is an object, right? Mm -hmm. It's saying that if you do oh. an object like that with right. this dot member and and vars and we don't use no well, no cuz it's still I don't know. Okay. Yeah. But, but that's not like a constructor. That's just a regular creating a object that those but basically within this, you wouldn't be able to access like, uh, so you couldn't pull out container dot member out of that to use in another function. Is that what it's trying to say? Yeah, but it's made the same way. So I guess I don't understand why. Okay. So this car, car disk underscore mileage. Right. Prototype. This mileage plus equals miles. So I guess, yeah, I guess you can't access this dot mileage when you create a new car. I mean, I guess this is pre-ES6, so I'm assuming that this is supposed to be a class, right? Like, with the capital, or, you know. I guess, I don't know. <laughs> so, they're saying that this is a private variable. Yeah, you know, we didn't, you know, we didn't actually pass it in into the function from the, like, from the beginning. Hmm. Uh, I'm still not sure, dude. Uh, so I guess is it more that like so if we so if we create a new car function so like board equals new car right and then so is it more the fact that like if I try to do uh, four dot underscore mileage that it won't return something like it won't return here yes let's do let's copy this right. And then I'll do. Oh, I just also got load um, mileage. You know that this is referring to like the the, the car function itself. So yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't think you're able to call mileage outside of the class, but outside of the function. Sorry. Oh, I see what you mean. So you you know you can't call mileage without this, and you can't use this. Outside the class. Right, right, right. So, so I have to. I have private, to I have created to. a private variable for function. You can use it outside of the function, even when you're calling the function. You can't, no, you can use the function to call. You can use the function to call. Just try car dot mileage. <clears throat> or car bracket. Okay, go on. Let's see. Mileage. Use the use the bracket after car just to. So oh, I see. Because it's a, it's yeah, yeah. Hey guys, my it's eleven thirty here, and I gotta get off, get lunch, and get ready for work soon. Um, All right, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Later. See you. I mean, I use uh, uh car dot car bracket dot uh mileage. You know, this is referring to car, so like the function. To call it function, you use the bra use card bracket. Like oh, the, I see. The normal yeah. bracket, not the box. Yeah, the mileage. <laughs> so I don't think you can use it outside the function. So if he creates a new car, would mileage still be available? That's what I was trying to. 
yeah, think so, but to be within the function, can you use it to, to like perform um maybe uh by work on an algorithm or something within the function and out output something. If the, the function doesn't return anything, not, I don't think anything will be, able, will be, will be able to call, call anything out of the function. But just try try um within the function, try to uh um uh, um clear out just um clear out this and try to create another function and return the, the this dot mileage and see if it comes. Yeah. But I don't think it's on run because car is already available. So I think you have to cancel the uh, Instagram uh, again. It will, it will say car is already initialized. I don't think it will. Make it car, car, car one. Right, 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 right. Okay. So, yeah. To end. Mark, oh, mark. No, you did, you didn't return return yeah the, the return statement there so you have return mileage return this dot mileage okay oh should be see. So you can use it without within the. I don't think you can use it outside the function, but you can use it to perform like activities within the function. Then you can you can return like the output or something. You get right. It, it, it still little, makes very little, little sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> it makes like very little sense to me. Hey, but you know how you can use it now. Like, at least because if you read down below where that code is, okay. it says. The problem is this check doesn't actually protect against bad data since anyone with access to the instance can manually change the mileage property later. Oh, so right. if they can manually change the mileage property later, why is it a private member? Yeah, see, it's, look here. You always assign it to a different value. Honda dot mileage. Okay, so this is what I was trying to look for, right? So Honda. So, and then, okay, then. Okay. okay. So, yeah, what's this? Totally, what's, you what's can totally this? access it. So, it's just private for no reason. <laughs> There's got to be a reason, or they wouldn't like teach it in multiple. Yeah, yeah things, I, understand, I understand. But they don't explain it very well in the two things that we looked at. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, there's okay, another uh, object that's uniquely linked to its instance, and this second object will actually be private. So if you create an immediately invoked function, so wrap it all in a parentheses and throw it on there so it immediately gets invoked, this becomes private. Right, because this is all stored in function scope. So it goes away. Uh, function car. This is still no. All we've been reading is even confusing me more. Than yeah. Before. Like I'm sure this has a use case, and I think the fact that yeah. they teach getters and setters is like is no, something yes, they added does. into ES6, and it's like, ooh, look, you can use getters and setters now, and uh, like people. But it's still like like right. us that are learning is like, why? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure the people that have been coding for years and years. Obviously, they that like, oh yeah. You know, getter and setter. Right. Like I, I completed, I just completed this challenge and just like reading what they do at the bottom. It's like, why do you need the getter and setter when you could do all that without having a getter and setter in it? Right. That's so weird. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. So. So it returns this author, new book, console, dot writer, what? Notice the syntax where you can folks get her end setter is a, not even a function. Getters or setters are important because they hide internal implementation controls, which is like, which we just read is bull. <laughs> like, so I don't know. Cool, whatever. You hide them, but you can still alter them. Why would you hide something you can alter? So. Use a class keyword to create a thermostat class. 
the constructor accepts Fahrenheit temperature. Now create a getter and setter in the class to, to obtain temperature and Celsius scale. So remember that Celsius equals five over nine times Fahrenheit minus 32 and Fahrenheit is Celsius times 9.0 over five plus 32 where F is the value of the temperature in Fahrenheit scale and C is the value of temp same temperature in Celsius. Uh, note, when you implement this, you would be tracking the temperature inside the class in one scale, either Fahrenheit or Celsius. This is the power of getter and setter. You're creating an API for another user who would get the correct result, no matter which one you track. In other words, you're tracking the implementation details from the consumer. Hold on. So a getter and a setter is the same thing as saying, you know, something dot something equals this, right? But right. you're using a function to do it. Right. Is, is that the difference? Yeah, because you saw like, is we created, remember we created that Honda one that's created a new car and we just access the very, like the access the property and then just change it. Right. It's basically the same thing. Yeah. But instead you're using a function to do it with the same syntax as doing it the other way. Right. It's still weird. Yeah. One day we'll get it. I don't, <laughs> don't I don't get it, man. <laughs> <laughs> this makes me not like classes at all. I'm sure they're very important. Your class is going to be thermostat, by the way. Not temperature. Oh, therm yeah, it's temperature. Sorry. Thank you. Thermostat. Right? Yeah. So then we use a constructor. Taken. Okay, I got confused. So I guess this would be temperature and then this. dot temperature equals temperature. And then you have getter, which is get temperature. Yes, dot temperature. You can name it anything because it's a function. Yeah, okay. Right. Right, right, right. Yeah, I guess that's the name of it, right? Yeah, it's the underscore. Because that weird thing. Setter. An update, you got to return temperature in the getter as Celsius. Not as far right. Out. You got to put a, like a formula in there. Oh, I see. Okay, so set, uh, set. And then so I guess I could do it within the curly braces, right? So this is so that one you could pretty much copyright over from the other one. So like set temp takes a parameter temperature and then like this dot underscore oh, okay, equals okay. temperature. Oh, I see. Okay. I was getting confused because I thought I was like actually okay. Right, 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 right. This dot 
I'm really not very good at this. Okay, cool. You did the set make up the sets the um Celsius of uh, yeah. Celsius temperature. No, I think you only need to set it for the getter. So when it gets the temperature, it converts it to Celsius. Oh, here. So this would be. Uh, no, that's the yeah. So you would have to put your formula in. Right, 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 right. After that, so. Really? That's it? That's depressing. Oh, okay. Because it literally... It's weird. All right, I'm not going to question it. I still don't like getters or setters. So, okay, now I'm lost. <laughs> I think this testing ends up canceling out all the work that you're supposed to do on the opposite. Because okay, this um, never shows up. With the, the, the get method, so it's supposed to um, get the new value, right? Right. So for this one, it wanted it in Celsius. So I returned it with the... Uh, I don't get it. The set method sets the new value to something else, right? It basically sets the temperature. But that's why this becomes 26. So then when you access it, it's 26. Like, there, you don't. Like. Yeah, there's nothing in the testing that shows what the setter is doing. Because <laughs> this example is as confusing as the old thing itself. Yeah, this is not a very good test suite. My, my, my. Um, my code is not even working, so I don't know. Uh, okay. You can share it if you want. Yeah. Okay, let me share this one.
Okay. Uh, you can see. Um, the, this is the class. This is the class. Then the constructor which takes a temperature value and we create the constructor. For the, then um, the get um, get method set method. Oh, I see. Uh, the set you don't need a return. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, my set is the temperature. Okay, sorry. Okay, also, set method doesn't return anything. Then the get method returns. Uh, Oh, okay. No, I'm no. <laughs> Again. Take a look at the left example at the top. I forget this, the dumb reason why they said, um, oh, is it because like if they, if you try to, what happens when you don't do the underscore? I mean, obviously I guess this, but what? Trying to remember in that there, I'm supposed to do underscore before temp temp before temperature. Yeah, I think you need to have the underscore if you're using getters and setters. Right. I yeah. Remember that from the MDN. Okay. So. I'm trying to remember why though. Like, is it because? Yeah, because in, in Python also you have to use um like the underscore two times to like to um um create um within um uh, within method like encaps encapsulation. Uh, okay, so it knows it, yeah, because you can't use that same word because then it'll get all uh, funky. Yeah. <laughs> Still done. Okay, it runs now, but I don't. Okay, let's. I get the. I get what you. I did the, the new the new temperature. I did the temperature the temperature value, but okay. You get okay. The set method sets the the the, the return value from. Um, no. Okay. Why don't you just okay? Wait. Oh. Yeah. So I I think I understand the get. So like you can set a get method. So like, say that like, when somebody makes a car, okay, and they set like miles per gallon on the car mm -hmm. when they call it, um, or when they okay. create a new one, that's the parameter miles per gallon. You could put the get in there to automatically change the miles per gallon to kilometers per gallon. So okay, you okay, we're changing like, yeah, okay, okay, I understand now. We're changing like, you know, the, the, the temperature we're getting in initially is in um, Celsius, or, or, or is in Fahrenheit, sorry. Mm -hmm. So we're using the get method to convert it to uh, Celsius. So anywhere we want to like use it in Celsius, we just use the get method to do that. Yeah, you're always gonna get the temperature in Celsius. Because it's assumed that you're always going to put the temperature when you create the object in Fahrenheit. Okay. So, okay. Okay. But for the I setter, guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so the setter, we are, we are initializing, the, I think. Oh. So, no, we're just changing the value for the Fahrenheit value, like the initial value. You get, like, you know, this dot uh, underscore temperature is like the temperature we're working with within the class. Okay. But you're then, setting the initial value in the original constructor. Yeah, we're changing parameter. the value. We're changing the value. Yeah. So if you want to use use a, like, like you want to use it for another type of like you you are going to like use it for like a different value for Fahrenheit. So we just okay. call the set method to set it to another value for Fahrenheit. Okay, that makes sense. So like it'll it'll once it'll automatically convert it to it'll always be Celsius, right? No, like initially, like the code itself is taking it on Fahrenheit, right? And we're using the get uh, method to convert it to Celsius. So let me. Uh... If you want to change like the initial value for like the Fahrenheit to pass in earlier, you want to change it to, like another value in Fahrenheit, like you know the values we, we imagine the code is people like we are just passing in Fahrenheit values. So if you want to change the value like the Fahrenheit value. We can just we just call the set method and pass in the new Fahrenheit value. So we are we initialize it to the new this temperature. So we are initializing it to this. We're initializing the new temperature. So this should the new temperature should be to, to use that to Fahrenheit. Like so if so let's say the constructor, we're assuming everything that comes in is Fahrenheit. Should the set yeah. be to Fahrenheit and then the get be to to uh, Celsius? Celsius? Yeah, we're just changing the Fahrenheit value with set. 
we are not converting, we are changing. So like what, what I'm saying, that, when we when we go if, like let's that, what, 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 what if you sell set it to a Celsius? I mean the problem is is that it, like the like I see in the testing, they're setting a temperature to Celsius. So it's converting to Celsius because it it's already at well, I guess if it didn't, if it got it, then it would have done less. Can I can I share my screen for a second? I want to show you guys something. Yeah. Okay. So what we're looking at here is oops. Damn, my Chrome just crashed. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Okay, let's try this again. Yeah, right, let's just go to free code camp. Curriculum. Like your screen is not um, showing. Like I think you. Right, let's try this again. It's showing now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was weird. All right, <laughs> where were we at? Getters and setters. Okay, so it's still here. Good. Um, does it still pass? Okay, good. So what I did was I came in here and I did uh, a console log. Right. Of thermos dot temperature. So it gives you seventy six, right? Okay. So that, yeah. That makes so sense because you, you created the was... you created the object here with a parameter 76 right yes okay so you can use the set method to change the the finite value you can how would you call a set method how would you do that so here you got okay use temperature use thermos thermos dot temperature it won't work it won't i already tried it oh okay thermos like the uh in, initiation dot temperature no sorry oh. dot dot temp sorry since your set your set value your set method name is temp this temp yeah it should be thermos dot temp yeah then you the brackets to change you're passing the new value he's trying to instantiate the the set method on on temperature so it should be thermos dot temp and bracket then you pass in the new value for temperature but i don't have a thermos dot temp in my Thing. Yeah, you no, you create you you created uh you created a new class and initialized the thermos. You created a new thermos start class and initialized it to thermos. Yeah, there. So you can use that to call the set to call the set method. So it will be thermos dot temp. No, but the yeah. whole point of it is so that you can do thermos dot temp equals uh, or no, thermos dot temperature. If you're equating it, oh, uh, uh, Adam, if you're equating, I'm just using the get method. If you use, if you put the bracket and pass in a new value, you're using the set method. Mm, not okay. how we did yesterday. Okay. Yeah, that was what we did yesterday. We just did the different names. It's just different names. So, we, um, on, on your line 26, try to pass in uh, um, a new value, let's say 80. Line 26. That's what? Thermostat temperature? Thermos dot temp. Yeah, thermos dot temp. Bracket 26. No, like your line, 20, line 27. We just pass in. You already called it out. Thermos dot temp like that? Yeah, then bracket like um, for he wants the parentheses. He wants to instantiate the function. Yeah. yeah, yeah Thermos dot temp the setter function. But again, like you're not like doing it that way. Within the just no just within the bracket, just write eighty. Within the bracket, right. Eighty? Yeah. yeah. Okay, then let's um um call um how do I put this? You should change already. Well, Okay. Nah, because it's. What's that changing? Same it's way. not. You're not making a uh, method when you do temp. That's not, not. Yeah, that getter and setter is not an actual thing. Like, yeah, it, you're not creating a method here. Okay. So how we how, how can we call the set method? So here's here's what's getting me. You know, what I wanted to show you guys. Okay, so here it sets the the temperature right mm -hmm. to seventy six. So this dot temperature equals 76, right? Right. So when I console log it, it's right, 76. Okay, right. Or actually here. So here is let temp equal thermos dot temperature. Mm -hmm. So temp is just a variable, right? Right. Okay. 
So and I should you're using, the, you're using the getter. Uh, so I should just be able to console log temp, but look, it doesn't throw show up anything. Right, and I guess that's what's frustrating me too, because it's. But not, if I put thermos. Dot temp. Dot temp. It shows the twenty four point four four three. So, that's so it's like it's adding a new key value. in there. The Celsius value. But yet, just under it, when I console log thermos dot temperature, it's back to 76. And even after here, where they say thermos dot temperature is equal to 26, and I console log thermos dot temperature, this 76. Frustrating. This and if I take the underscore out, then you get the 26. This <laughs> <laughs> I have so, no clue what's going on here. <laughs> uh, like this is like some I don't know like what's going on in the stack of operations here that's just throwing me for a loop but I think we're just going to move on because <laughs> we'll end up racking our brains for hours trying to figure this out hold on I'm trying to do something okay um I'm trying to go to the original example, the book example, and see. So they, when you put lol, lol is new book anonymous, lol.writer, it returns the getter. And if you lol.writer equals what, and you console log that. I mean, I guess maybe because the implementation, you can't tie, you can't tie a variable to the getter and setter. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm done. I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was done after looking at those console logs. I'm like, I don't understand any of this. <laughs> Garbage. Yeah. I'm going I'm to forget about it until I like actually need it in the real world for some reason. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, Okay, so ES6, understand the differences between import and require. In the past, the function require would be used to import the functions in code in external files and modules. While handy, this represents a problem. Some files and modules are rather large and you may only need certain code from those external resources. ES6 gives us a very handy tool known as import. With it, we can choose which parts of a module or file are loaded or to load in a, into a given file, saving time and memory. Consider the following example. Imagine the math array functions has about 20 functions, but I only need one count items in my current file. The old require approach would force me to bring in all 20 functions. With this new import syntax, I can just bring in the desired function like so. So import curly brackets count items, which is the function we need from and I guess this is the file it's pulling it from. Yep. A description of the above code import function from file path goes here. We could also import variables the same way. There are a few ways to write an import statement, but the above is very common use case. The white space surrounding the function inside the curly braces is a best practice. Makes it easier to read the import statement. Um, note, the lessons in this section handle non-browser features. Import in the statements we introduce in the rest of these lessons won't work in a browser directly. However, we can use various tools to create code out of this to make it work in browser. Most cases, the file path requires a dot slash before it. Otherwise, node will look in the node modules directory first, trying to load it as a dependency. Okay. I don't understand that. <laughs> it's more to do with like when you're uh, with like npm when you're basically just doing uh, node, uh, node, uh, node modules. Like I didn't know package modules. Uh, you also yeah, run into it with React. You use requires to like um, import node modules. You get when you when you import them, you use them within your um, program in a particular way. In particular, way you can use them. So that's what um, mainly. Um, 
talking about like that, the last the, the last note. So it says add the appropriate import statement that will allow the current file to run use the capitalized string function. The file where this function lives is called string functions and it is in the same directory as the current file. So would you just same as above the above example? Yeah. And then capitalized string. Right. From does this need to be in Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, in string. Yeah, double quotes. Functions. So in theory, like if we were on Node, right? It would since since this is uh, in a string, it's going to look for string functions dot js. So like that's that's what's happening right now. Okay, so like you're not so you're using a function, maybe like a function you didn't write, but is in right. somebody else's file. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is basically all of npm. Like that's yeah, what you, you, like, when you write new module, like you upload them for them to copy for you, really someone else to use another JS file. Yeah. Okay. So that's basically what frameworks are, right? You're pulling in code that other people wrote. Yeah, yeah, you're applying them to your own. Right. So like React yeah, is a right. giant like JavaScript file that has a bunch of like you know, it in theory has a bunch of objects and functions that you can use. The same as like jQuery, or right. uh, or Angular, any of that, and then. There are obviously other, so they're almost like plugins, I guess, or like extra JavaScript files. So okay. that's all that's doing. All right, that's easy. Yeah. <laughs> ES6, use export to reuse a code block. In previous challenge, you learned about import, and how it can be leveraged to import small amounts of code from large files. In order for this to work though, we must utilize one of the statements that goes with import, known as export. When we want some code, a function, or a variable to be usable in another file, we must export it in order to import it into another file. Like import, export is a non-browser feature. This, the following is what we refer to as a named export. With this, we can import any code we, with this, we can import any code we export into another file with the import syntax you learned in the last lesson. That is a poorly worded sentence right there. <laughs> um, here's an example. Uh, capitalize string, so string returns this to capitalize, um, export capitalize string, export constant, so that's how you export a variable, whoever's using foobar. Um, alternatively, if you would like to compact all of your export statements into one line, you could take this approach, export, and then it has the variable and the function in here. How would you export like a whole file? Would you have to put every function and variable in there? So I guess Wonder. you can encapsulate it like, so have a keyword. So it'd probably be a keyword. So it'd be like const, you know, something equals, and then you'd have all those functions and, and, uh, and variables within it. And then you can use that keyword to say export this, and it'll take everything within that page. Okay, that makes sense. Um, below are two variables that I want to make available for other files to use. Utilizing the first way I demonstrated export, export the two variables. The first way, what, this way? You would have to have two exports? I was gonna try, I was gonna see. I wasn't wondering if it was just literally just that, that object or that uh, curly braces. I don't know. They make export. it sound a lot more complicated than it really is. Just, well, can I just uh, type in export in front of these? Wouldn't that work? I mean, technically. <laughs> no, I guess not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just in front of it? Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. The, the export uh, uh, syntax help, helps you make uh, those part of your code available for external use, right? Right. Right. So, like, I guess you could probably do export. Uh, okay, so what you're importing, what you're importing from another another uh, module is an uh, is an export in that module, right? Mm, not sure. What I'm saying, like you know, we imported like um a part like the capitalized uh, distant part from oh, these are brackets. That, that part 
we will we, we, like we have the keyword export within that module for us to be able to import it. You you get what I'm trying to say? Who has already been exported? Yeah, it's because I already added up here. So you do it like oh, this too. Okay. But it's not what it wants. It actually wants the other way. Oh, it wants it for each one to just say export. Mm -hmm. DK, I, I didn't understand the question. Look, what I'm saying is, like, you know, we imported, um, we capitalized string. Mm -hmm. We imported. Right. What I'm saying, the, the module we're importing within that module, capitalized string will, will be an export also. Yeah, also, they would have to have export in that yeah, file. Yeah, that's what, yeah, 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 that's, that was what I was trying to say. All right. Cool. Um, next, Do you start to yeah. import everything from a file. Sometimes you have a file that you wish to import all its contents into the current file. This could be done with the import star syntax. Here's an example where the contents of a file named math functions are imported into a file in the same directory. Import star as my math module from math functions. So import star as an object with this name from this path. Okay. Object with name of your choice imported okay. function. So if we import the module and there's a particular class within the module, we can initialize the class and use it within another module. Yeah, but in order to use if you're gonna use any of the functions from that you imported from this, you have to use a notation with this object. So it'd be my math module dot add or dot subtract. Because you're bringing in an object. An object of functions or methods. Uh, you may use any name following the import star as portion of the statement. In order to utilize this method, it requires an object that receives the imported values. From here, you will use the dot notation to call your imported values. The code below requires the contents of a file, capitalized string, found in the same directory as it's imported. Add the appropriate import statement at the top of the file using the object provided. The import star as um, my function object from Capitalized strings. Is that it? Okay. Seems easy enough. Create and export fallback with export default. In the export lesson, you learned about the syntax referred to as named export. This allows you to make multiple functions and variables available for use in other fire files. There is another export syntax you need to know known as export default. Usually you will use this syntax if only one value is being exported from a file. It is used to create a fallback value for a file or module. Here's an example of export default. Export default function, so you just put default, since export default is used to declare a fallback value for a f module or file, you can only have one value be a default export in each module or file. Additionally, you cannot use export default with var, let, or const. Huh. So you can only export default functions or objects? No, because objects- You can, are you can set- so you have the ability to like, so if you just put like that file, whatever is in the default is going to get sent over and then I guess. Right. But it, but it only works for functions and not variables. Right. Right. That's weird. I guess this is tough also because it's so familiar with like NPM, like to do it outside of it is just weird. Yeah, because this isn't stuff you usually do with NPM, right? Usually you're just importing stuff. 
I mean, you have the ability, like, so if you're creating, like, if you're rolling some stuff or, you know, uh, uh, this is yeah. more like React to stuff, like ES6 and React stuff, like React, basically. Okay. Uh, In the last challenge, you learned about export default and its uses. Not really. <laughs> Just learned you could use it on a function. Um, <laughs> it is important to note that to import a default export, you need to use a different import syntax. In the following example, we have a function add, that is the default export of a file math functions. Here's how to import it. Import add from math functions. The syntax differs in one key place. The imported value add is not surrounded by curly braces. Unlike exported values, the primary method of importing a default export is simply to write the value's name after import. In the following code, please import the default export subtract from the file math functions. Okay. So. Import, subtract, subtract from math functions. Okay. Cool. Oh, we're on regular expressions now. Um, uh, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm too distant, man. I'm too of uh, uh, modules to bang. Okay. So, uh, and I'm not going to be here tomorrow. Actually, I'll be here Wednesday. Um, I, I was thinking I was going to miss Wednesday too, but I won't be here tomorrow. Okay. And I kind of wish I was here for regular expressions because this is really something that I like. I like struggle on. Maybe we. I wonder what else we can do tomorrow. Oh, there's gotta be something. That's the challenge, like the scripting challenge, the algorithm scripting. This thing. We can just look for like challenges from different uh, um, platforms, like work on tomorrow. I mean, we still have the image gallery that. Like I haven't worked yeah. on that. Yeah, I haven't worked on that also. Yeah, I did that one. The bouncing balls one, I'm having trouble with. Yeah, that's definitely. I guess what would be the next? Uh, I want hold on. The next one would be client side web APIs, which I kind of want everyone to be around because that's a fun one. I mean, if y'all want to do algorithms, um. I mean, yeah, I guess there's like there's sites you can do algorithms on, you know, like yeah, I did Edibit for a while. Yeah, Edibit was it was Edibit was a lot was a lot nicer because like the first like seventy were all kind of like string and array manipulation kind of stuff we went over through the MDN articles, and I guess so. Yeah, I and, and might the, do that. the the funny thing about Edibit, sir, there's like like somebody adds new challenges every day, so like. If you just sort them from like easiest to hardest, which I did, like every once in a while you get easy ones again. Cause I'm not even like to the medium ones yet. Yeah, I think I'm only at like two something. Like I literally did like 50 of them. And that was only because like I, they were always very easy. <laughs> right. And I think I tried to do more uh, like higher order functions and try to do like more concise code, but mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't great. Like, yeah, it. I was just trying to pass them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess we can do a little bit of Edibit. Um, I de my my favorite thing about Edibit over like other algorithm sites is that it's got that resources tab. Right. Where it's like you you can use right. You know, reduce or you can just, use. Yeah, that Code Wars just kind of like as 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 nice as Code Wars is, like their algorithms kind of suck because they're like. Four, like you have to create four or five functions to get an answer. Just right. Be, at least, at least with this one, um, it's like a hair. Okay, so can we? Okay. Are we? Are we starting um, um, reject today? No, no. We were. We'll hold. So what yeah, the, what we we'll hold off on reg regular expressions. Okay, so uh, I don't need anything today. Again. We're done for today. Work. Yeah, I think we're done yeah. for today. Um. Here, no, you can stop the recording if